A moment of significant change or a turning point, altering your course, is known as an inflection point. In business, these moments have a significant impact in many ways. That's why we're speaking with leaders from across the asset management industry to hear the stories of their inflection points and the impact they've had on their journeys. Join me and my colleague, Mark Spina, as we explore the business of being in business with insights that can help you wherever you may find yourself. This is Inflection Points. Hello, everyone. I'm Mark Spina, president and CRO here at Flex Networks. I'm also the co-host of Inflection Points. Today, I have the pleasure of being joined by Michael Silver. I'm going to read in Michael here and kick things off quickly with a, a dynamic interactive conversation. Michael is a speaker, coach, consultant who's worked with financial services firms and financial professionals, both solo producers and teams for the past 30 years. Michael and I were just commiserating, celebrating our shared 30 years in the business together. Time flies. Time does fly. In that time, Michael focuses his coaching and consulting engagements on many areas. A couple of key ones include client acquisition, marketing, practice management, team development, client service, and much more. Michael was a financial advisor. He knows the ropes. He learned firsthand the power of creative networking, qualified introductions, and relationship management. Beyond the sphere of work, Michael received a Bachelor of Science degree from Ithaca College, focused on finance, and has a has his certification in organizational and executive coaching from NYU. He's a regular contributor to the following, Barron's Advisor Hub and many other industry publications. He's a regular presenter at national conferences for Barron's NMCA or IWI now. We're showing her age again, Michael, Investment and Wealth Institute. Uh, along with his family, Michael is passionate about raising money for pediatric cancers and families in need with sick children. Nice work. Thanks, Mark. Sounds like a good intro. For our listeners, for our loyal listeners, they will recall that the last time we talked, it was you, Michael, your partner, Eric, and me. And uh, we were working collaboratively as two separate firms at the time. Since then, you and Michael have officially joined the Flex Networks team. We're thrilled to have you here. And we know, I know firsthand now, that in the last, say, 90 days, you and Eric have been hustling, engaging with advisors and in, in all parts of the country, different firms. So we're going to tear up the usual inflection points script that we, that we use or format that we use. And instead today, focus on some of the aha moments that you've seen from the <clears throat> from your perch in the last in the last travels yeah that great, mark yeah absolutely and we, we couldn't be more excited to now have folded in and be part of the flex team and my mind is going two places as you talk about these aha moments or inflection points and i'm going to do one initially with our transition into flex and then we okay. can talk about some things that happened this week as we were on the road that are very relevant to your question but the, the first thing coming into flex in July, now that we're in October, is we get to much more practice what we preach. Eric and I and our team running our own business, you're a little bit of that saying of chief cook and bottle washer, right? We were juggling all these priorities ourselves. Now we the, also talk, I'll interject. I also yeah, say, like the other one you use, shoemaker shoes, right? Yeah, we had a little bit of shoemaker shoe effect, right? We tell people yep. to do things, but then our shoes weren't as clean as everyone else's. Point being now with Flex, with a bigger, although quickly growing company, we can, the keyword is leverage. And we had to do everything ourselves before, for the most part. And we ran a tight ship, which we're proud of. But now we have someone like you to help guide us. We have a media team. We have a billing and operational team. We have a marketing team. We have people helping us with our follow-up process. And all those things are our topics and best practices that we work on every day with our clients through coaching. And we did a lot of it ourselves. And I'm not saying we dropped any balls because we tried to, again, like I said, run a very tight ship. But the wonderful thing about coming together is that word leverage and trusting in people to help us all carry that ball together. Again, Michael, we, we literally uh, tore up the usual inflection points outline. So this is a, a free form conversation here. And what you just said makes you think part of what you advocate for 
the advisors that you engage with and the big teams and fast growing practices is, is what that the, the, the highest and best use of their time is likely engaging with clients, Correct. right? Migrating away from billing operations follow up allows you to spend more time engaging with clients and then that, exactly. that bridges to today. So tell us about some of those most recent engagements. And I know you had a, a, a large one just yesterday, so maybe start there. Yeah. So we were in Chicago this week at a, it was called a Best Minds event. So it wasn't a conference, an industry conference. It was for one region within a firm. And like I said, about 80 advisors there. And it was different panels of their peers throughout mm. the day. And that's what advisors and firms, whether you're an RIA or in the wirehouse or in between, everybody loves hearing from other successful practices like theirs. And that's what this was. And there, there are four different things that I literally scribbled down so I wouldn't forget. So the first of those was how you do anything is how you do everything. So how you do anything is how you do everything. And the way I interpreted I that. that, not having heard that quote before, is first off, first impressions go a long way. So you always have to put your best foot forward. And another thought that came to me with that quote is, you can become very routine and even complacent in this end industry or any industry, right? So how you do one thing will really spill over to how you do much of everything if you really want to dig into those words. And I think it's critical to always take a step back and think about your image, your story, your process, your service model. You and I could riff back and forth and come up with a list of 50 of those things. No doubt. Um, but I think it's critical that you take a step back from the day to day and look at anyone looks at their practices and their best practices of how you do things and what can you do differently or what is that first step, that first impression that spills over to over every other area or everyone else that is in your world. That makes sense? <laughs> totally. Before you go to the other aha moments, I want to take a quick detour, right? Uh, a number of our listeners are advisors, branch managers, complex managers, sales and training coordinators. What did you learn from the setup or what would you share about the setup of yesterday's meeting? I, I know you're energized by the panel format. Do you, did, is, would you advocate for that? Like how do, Pretend I'm a complex manager and right. I'm thinking, oh, Michael, I, I'd like to do a, a large scale training session in November in Nashville. What should I do? I would recommend this because we don't see a lot of it. Okay. In general, and you call me out on this, in general, in our industry, as long as we've both been around it, most conferences are speakers, a speaker, one at a time on stage, many times with a PowerPoint. And we do that too, right? But You're more and more people want to hear from others. If you ask people, and if you asked me years ago when I was an FA, what was your favorite part of conferences? Happy hour. Why? Because that's when you have the, not for the bummer, <laughs> for the ability to network and speak to your peers and just learn and share ideas and ask questions. This format enabled that. I would love to see this replicated. Everybody wants to hear what's working out there. And as much as some people think there's some secret sauce, most things have been heard, but they want to hear it again. And, and if I recall from what you've shared and what we talked about prior to the event itself, it was a combination though of speakers, right? You had advisors on panels, right? You had asset had some, managers on yeah, panels you had and you had, asset managers. you had coaches like yourself. Correct. Yeah, it was, I'd say three quarters of the speakers were advisors. But you did have asset management representation, presidents, CEOs of asset management firms, an economist, mm. a couple of distribution specialists and wholesalers in that local market because people know them. Sure. Yeah, so it was a mixture, but mostly advisor based and within their general geography. So a lot of people knew each other, but it's good to see them up on stage and hear them share what works and sometimes what doesn't work. Of course. Yeah. Makes sense. All right. Thank you for that. Let, 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 let me bring you back to aha moments from yesterday. So how you do anything is how you do everything. Yep. What else? Another one was one of the speakers asked the group, and this is a very high functioning, very successful group of advisory practices. How many of you got into this business to lead others? 
And literally, yeah. the room was silent. Maybe two, three people slowly raised their hands. And this is a, a, a recurring theme in our industry. Advisors are typically, not always, but typically not good leaders of others, meaning they don't want to be a char running a big team. They want to do, like you said, they want to go out and source business and be rainmakers. They want to service their clients in a relationship management pers from a, that perspective. And many of them want to manage money or manage the managers of the money. They don't want to have to worry about the, they worry about their team. They don't want to have to be leaders and managers. And that was a big moment. And a lot of time needs to be allocated towards helping them be better leaders. I think that's, that's an episode to itself. That's a practice management module to itself when, when you think about it, Michael. And we've talked about this before, about like strengths and weaknesses being in close proximity. So when you think about the strengths required to become a successful advisor, what it, it's individual drive, self-determination, you've got to be self you, you've got to be self-motivated, right? So then you progress as yourself for a number of years, and now you're a, a successful advisor. Then all of a and sudden, was, then all of a sudden yeah, you have a team, right? So the, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like the little leaves pop up and then boom, you have this big exactly. plan. You, you also have to create culture, which yeah. is another topic that could be an episode in and of itself. Uh, no, no doubt. Uh, uh, spend so much time together, meaning at work. You could either elaborate there or, or do you want to go to any other particular? Yeah, I have a couple more good ones. Oh, go for it then. Let's, let's stay on the, so let's stay the on the one, ahas. I quote, and I again wrote this down as fast as I heard it because I loved it. Don't sell them, compel them. So Give back in the day, again, don't, don't sell, sell them. them, compel them. Okay. So when you and I started, at least I did, tell me if, if you did too, I was selling product. Yes. They didn't have wrap accounts. Recurring revenue was not a word. You know, I we almost remember the pitch it was selling, for example, Home Depot stock, individual shares to individual clients. Yeah, I was in the Muni side, on the Muni side, yeah. and we just brought in a block of bonds, this percent for this many years, how many would you like? And then you just be quiet and wait. How many That's would sounds, you like? That sounds super compelling. Like Times have changed. Rates yeah. are getting better. I, I know. Don't sell them, compel them. So a couple things yeah. that means to me, and then would, would love your thoughts also. We yeah. are in the relationship management business. Yes, we do financial planning. We do investments and wealth management and every other ancillary service, but we're not in the product sales business. That's the output of the work. If the plan, that's financial plan, for example, is the heavy lift. How that gets allocated is a little more commoditized. So- mm. One thing I work with advisors on all the time is selling the benefits. It's not selling the product. The compel them part of the quote is selling the benefits, showing your value, explaining why you're the right choice, you and your team to work with. So if you really peel that onion back, it's about having a compelling story and a value proposition and really explaining why you and what makes you different and moving further and further away from trying to sell them on something. And like it said, compel them that you are the right choice and the perfect person or team or firm to help steward their wealth. Makes total sense. And there's a bit, there's a pattern though, right? Th these are clever, memorable phrases, right? To, to take, bring them to life though, in all cases takes additional work takes additional practice, takes, I'll say it, it sounds self-enlightened given I'm talking to a business coach to talk, <laughs> to have a, seriously, to have a coach involved, don't sell them, compel them. Somebody's going to say, oh, Michael, that makes perfect sense. To really affect that change though, what do you have to do? You have to think about, it. you have to write down what are the compelling benefits of working with me, my team, my firm, right? You, and then if you have a team, you have to train the team what are the have similar messaging to, right. to, to have similar messaging so the phraseology if you will is, is cool and stimulating it stimulates thoughts there's work behind all of these phrases is what strikes me oh big time i had an advisor email me last night i have to get back to him this morning 
West Coast based, pitching a prospect for $10 million. And the first two sections of the agenda are around asset allocation and performance and cash flows. The final piece is why you should choose us. Mm -hmm. And that's the crux of it. Yeah. What are the benefits in working with you? And we regularly will go this go through this exercise with advisors and teams. For example, a lot of times it comes up when they're trying to win business that's already at another firm. And you're trying to say, here's why you'll be better off. And it has to be based around the client, not the advisor. We always talk about being advisor or client-centric versus advisor-centric. It's not I, it's you. Do we have a fourth? Oh, I have one or two more if we have time. Here's the other two. If you can't be replaced, you can't be promoted. Or or they then said it a second time a different way. If you make yourself replaceable, you can be promoted. That's a little counterintuitive. A lot of people want irreplaceable people on their team. That way they need to keep them because they're so good. But to me, this was enlightening and an aha moment. And it made me think to a team I work with in the Midwest that literally has a flow chart in a spreadsheet of every employee mapping yeah. out their career path. Okay, uh, in 2028, yeah. this person's going to retire. In 2035, wow. this person's going to retire. In 2024, this person's being elevated from an assistant to a dedicated planner. And they have it all mapped out. And they want to make sure that everyone has a clear understanding, right, of their flight path, right, to success and to elevating their career. And Always make sure that not only are they sourcing the person to fill that seat, but that they are replaceable. And it's interesting, it hedges risk a little bit too. In a situation where you lose somebody, they weren't irreplaceable. But this is coming from a much more positive tone that we want you to grow on our team. And we want to make sure that you can be easily replaced. Doesn't mean there's not a, a heavy lift to train somebody and mentor them up. But I found that really interesting. Same here. And I connected, Michael, to the, to the other concept on leadership, right? If you, as you think about this, right, I was a successful individual contributor. I was a successful individual advisor. With success, I added assets. With assets, I added team members. With, and now, it, it's probably that it doesn't feel suddenly in the moment, but oh, it's for purpose. All of a sudden I have a team, right? Do I have now, this is, do I have processes in place for that team? What are, how do I get them to feel like they're both contributing to the team, that their job is secure, but the best thing that they can do is make themselves replaceable. That's not intuitive. Here again, it takes somebody from the outside a lot of times to see that, to drive that behavior and to help the advisor and, and their respective team make it happen. Oh, yeah. I mean, that makes so sense? Many, oh, 100%. I have so many advisors that'll say, I don't know what I do without her. So some long tenured team member right. that in the senior leader's mind, I can't survive without them. And yeah. Yeah. That causes big problems because people do leave or they retire or they go out on leave, whatever it might be. So that one really jumped out at me. And then the final one. What do you got? We did a, a kind of a breakout from this group afterwards for a, okay. a smaller event. And it, it was really themed around business planning. And as coaches and consultants to advisors, every year at the end of the year, we collaboratively work with all of our teams and advisors to write a business plan together. Sure. When surveyed, this room of... I was a good sized group, smaller than the day event, but one in three raised their hand that they write a business plan. Everybody needs to. And, and for our purposes, Mark, this is a whole nother episode. I bet you one in three of them take it out of their, open it up on the screen or take it out of their desk after they write it. It's good. One in three yeah, it, it, have it keeps one. funneling oh, to fewer yeah, and fewer. Exactly. That's where we step in. We're not only going to help you write it, we're going to make sure we hold you accountable to execute on it. And that's a key thing. But awesome. business planning is a, is a deep topic. We should do another episode just on that alone. Consider it done. Good. Parting thoughts? Back the way we started with us joining Flex. Okay. Delegate. Trust in the resources around you. Leverage the resources around you. And it allows every party in their different areas to really focus on what they're best at 
and you will be more successful by letting go of certain things and, and having others surround you in different capacities to, to, to each be at your best. I think that's a critical thing. And with the quotes from this week, I could go to a conference every week and come back with good quotes. I write these things down, put them on a post-it note on your monitor, really let them sink into your mind and pull out a little something from each. I'm, yeah. I'm, re I'm reading the book Atomic Habits right now, where it says just increase 1% something each day. Just a little or tweak, a little fed. polishing to get better and better what you do. Totally agree. I'm glad we changed things up. I'm glad we took an extemporaneous approach and, and picked up on all these great and recent ideas. Michael, what I would share with the audience is if you hear a phrase that resonates, whether it's how you do anything is how you do everything or how many, <clears throat> you know, don't sell them, compel them. It could be one of, one of 100, one of 1,000 phrases that might resonate. If you're so deeply moved by that phrase that you, you want to bring it into your, to your work and professional life, I think a great way to do that is with, is with a, a business coach. We're, we're working hard to, to give you as, as much time and an ability to focus on what you do best. The partnership is off to a, a great start where we're psyched about it. So. Thank you to Michael. A big thank you to our listeners for your time, allowing us to occupy and potentially enhance your mind space. Both are valuable. We are a work in progress as people and a podcast. If you picked up anything of interest, please subscribe, leave a rating and a review. Until next time, thank you, Michael. Thanks for having me. And for our audience, keep looking for and uh, creating your own inflection points. The information contained in this recording is provided as is for educational and informational purposes only and should not serve as the basis for any trading or investing decisions. Flex Networks makes no representations and disclaims all express, implied, and statutory warranties of any kind to any viewer, listener, or other third party. Neither Flex Networks nor any of its affiliates make any endorsement of any particular company, security, product, or financial strategy, and nothing contained in this recording should be construed as investment advice. Investors should undertake their own due diligence and carefully evaluate companies before investing.